Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, popularly known as Epic Zara, and I'm back with another video. Now, for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm living in Nigeria. You know that I'm a violinist and composer. And not only have I been working hard trying to get that guap, I've been living my best baby girl life. Now, if you've been here long enough, you also know that I previously did a video detailing the different types of Nigerian guys, which I will update. If you want an update, drop some pink emojis in the comment section down below. But today we're doing something a bit different. We're doing a video detailing different types of Nigerian women or women in Nigeria, depending on the category. Now, a quick disclaimer, because it's 2021 and I don't want a lawsuit or backlash or to be canceled on Twitter. I'm a huge supporter of women supporting women. I'm just talking about my very unique experiences in this environment with different categories of women. Now I'm not here to judge how other people choose to live their lives. I'm merely highlighting some very clear archetypes and stereotypes that repeat themselves within this society. Now, another disclaimer, these types are not exclusive to this society. They present themselves in other societies as well. But of course, this is a different culture, so the way they present themselves is going to be different. Now, if you recognize any of these types that we're about to get into in other cultures, please be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And let's really just get right into this video. Now, of course, before we do, please do the four simple things I always remind you to do. That would be to give this video one big thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content and really helps my engagement. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you ate today. Let me know what you're planning to do later. Comment on the video, anything really. Please help my engagement. Be sure to share this video with your friends and your loved ones. And last but never ever least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on all your notifications so you know every time I post a new video. Thank you so much. And without any further ado, let's get right into this video. If you're not already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Efikzara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. I post a lot of my photography there and of course behind the scenes on how I get my iconic imagery. Be sure to also follow me on Twitter at Efikzara so you can chat to me and ask me all the questions your heart desires. I try to answer my DMs as much as possible and any tweets I reply to, so that's the best place to reach me. Now the first type we're going to highlight is the independent woman. Now the independent woman is super, super hardworking. You always see her either doing her nine to five or running her business with unmatched tenacity with unmatched diligence grace you're just like girl how do you do this how do you handle all of this i'm trying to be like you when i grow up now with the independent woman you really cannot talk to her anyhow if you open your mouth and you go wow she's gonna look at you and probably slap you <laughs> ah. Now the independent woman, she does not need your money, but she certainly doesn't mind it because if you're trying to chat to her, your ambition needs to match her ambition or you're finna get aired. And now of course, me being me, these are the types of babes I choose to surround myself with because <laughs> Can't be hanging around anybody that's not going to motivate me to be better. Again, she's an icon, she's a dream. Every guy wants to be with her, but if you're not worthy, shift a big. That's pretty much the sum of the independent woman. Now this next category of babe in this environment is actually quite different from the independent woman, but bears a lot of similarities. And that is the housewife. Now the housewife is still extremely hardworking because let's be real, Managing a home, managing children. So y'all, in Nigeria, we have this thing called NEPA, right? And they just be taking the light with audacity. There's not electricity 100% of the time. I even think they changed their name. So if somebody knows their new name, drop it down in the comment section below, please. But um, that's what happened to me right now. But without further ado, let's get right back into this video. Now the housewife is still extremely hardworking because let's be real, managing a home and managing children is a full-time job. Now the typical housewife in this environment can throw it down in the kitchen. To reiterate, she's also an exceptional manager of the home. She definitely doesn't have a nine to five because she's a housewife, but a lot of housewives in this environment open their own businesses. So they might sell hair products, skincare products, 
They might do market runs for people and that's how they make their own extra kind of money. It's beautiful. I mean, it's a very different lifestyle to what I aspire to, but it's definitely something that's prevalent in this environment and an interesting update to what is very traditional in Nigerian culture. Now, this is one of my favorite categories and a category I low-key wouldn't mind being in. Now, this is the trophy wife. Now, the trophy wife is more than likely married to one of these Nigerian billionaires. She's really sexy. She has her body done. She has her face done. And I'm not talking about just a face beat. I'm talking about she's most likely gone under the knife to be at peak attractiveness, which I'm totally for. If you're trying to get plastic surgery, do your thing, girl. I ain't finna judge. That digression aside though, the trophy wife probably has three to five children, but looks like she's nobody's mother because she's just that much of a bed. She has a life of her own and goes out with her fine friends to the club or to the lounge or to bars and basically chops it up. Guys are still hitting on her even though she's extremely married and she more than likely runs an extremely visible and successful business outside of her home. She's also a super mother. Now, obviously, me being me, I have friends in this category and I love seeing my trophy wife, friends outside. We're usually having a good time, chopping it up, you know, just vibing off of each other. And the best part about these kinds of women is that they're so comfortable with themselves, they don't really care what anybody else thinks. So again, I would not mind being in this category at all. <laughs> Now the next category is the Nigerian feminist. Now I say Nigerian feminist because there are white feminists which are for white women and white women problems. There are black feminists which are for black women and black women's problems because feminism, the broad umbrella of feminism, didn't include them. And they're Nigerian feminists because the issues that women in this environment face are starkly different from the issues that women in other environments face. Now a lot of feminists fight for the greater good of women in this environment, period. They just want equality, right? There are some fake feminists and there are others that are very, very true. And by that I mean there are feminists that will be shouting on Twitter that yes, they're feminists, that yes, they deserve to be treated equally, that yes, they're not going to take nonsense from any man, but then in their marriages or their relationships, they'll be very much pick -me's. And of course, you have those feminists that are consistent throughout their relationships, throughout their lives, and the way that they conduct themselves. Then you also have those feminists that are extremely bitter and really just hate men, period. You have those feminists that are more balanced and don't dislike men, but dislike the inequality and the patriarchy in this kind of a society. Now, to be fair, I can't even really blame those feminists that are more bitter because they experience a lot of really negative things. Women are subjected to so much trauma in this environment and I really did not understand or comprehend until I started seeing some of the crazy behavior for myself. Now, to be fair, I still cannot relate in many ways because my life experiences are starkly different from people born and brought up in Nigeria, but I understand and I sympathize. And I am very much for equality, of course, better treatment of women, of course, and the dismantling of this vicious patriarchy. Now, next, we have the rich girls. Now, these young women are usually the very privileged children of politicians or business people. They really don't have a care in the world. They just live their lives in a very nonchalant, blase, blase, let me do whatever I want kind of way. Some of them can be hella rude, and I've had my own negative experiences with very entitled politicians' children that don't know how to act or talk to people that are doing a service for them. <laughs> But I digress, <laughs> they're obviously enjoying a lot of money, trips around the world, buying whatever they want to buy, shopping their parents' money, talking to guys anyhow, because I mean, if you can't take care of them the way their parents are taking care of them, you're simply not their mate. And to be fair, a lot of them are very cool, and a lot of my friends are rich people's children, but the ones that their parents stole money are the ones that are usually super entitled and have a nasty attitude. But anyway, what do I know? <laughs> now there's another category that parades as rich girls, but we'll get to them in a second. Stay tuned. 
Now this next category is two-pronged. It's the runs girls, but there are two types of runs girls. There's your ordinary, regular, degular, schmegular runs babe. And then there's the high-class runs girl that only flies private and can buy your past, present, and future, period. Period. <laughs> so for your regular, degular, schmegular runs babes, maybe they're enjoying some rich guy's money, whether it's a Yahoo guy, a businessman, a politician, you know. They have a nice apartment, maybe in Wuse Tu or Maitama. They wear cute clothes. They wear the occasional Hermes slipper, maybe even Dior or Louis Vuitton. They're living life. They can buy a bottle of Moe in the club. They're enjoying themselves. Now those ones are comfortable, but the high class runs girls, they're in a different category completely. <laughs> They're competing with successful businessmen, dragging bank account with successful businessmen. Why? Because they're making that much money from their runs. Now, high class runs babes only fly private. They only carry Bottega Veneta and Chanel. They're not even effing with Gucci because Gucci's beneath them. So now high class runs girls, in order to cover their tracks or make it look like they're doing something other than collecting a lot of money from billionaires, they usually open really successful and visible businesses. Now, who else does this? The trophy wife. The rich girl is also capable of doing this, which I forgot to mention. So it's easy for a high class runs babe to make it look like she's a rich girl. Now, a lot of these high class runs girls also set up their parents, but to be very candid and very fair, it's not every young woman who chooses to do runs because of greed or decadence. There is a lot of hardship in this environment and sometimes it seems like it's the only way out, especially when men are busy soliciting young women for sex who are trying to do honest work, honest jobs. You can be at your nine to five and be looking for a promotion and your boss will tell you, I'll only promote you if you sleep with me. Can you imagine living that kind of life? At least if you're doing runs, you have control over your body and over what you do with your body. You also have control over the men who want to have something to do with your body and how much you're going to collect to give them that right to your body for X period of time. So, I mean, again, like I said in the beginning, I'm not here to judge. Do what you feel you need to do with your life. Just do it with your head held high. Oh my gosh, you guys, so we're onto one of my favorite categories, and that's the shameless home wrecker. I love this category because one, I relate to it so hard, and two, I feel like it's one of the most out and proud categories. Now, this is a category that both men and women fall into very easily. I can't tell you the amount of men that have approached me, even though I was previously in a relationship. Even friends of my ex were literally on my case and in my DMs heavy. As soon as we broke up, I was like, wow y'all ain't sh <laughs> but anyway digression aside i love this category i'm very familiar with it now there are a lot of babes in this environment they're very very comfortable being very very inappropriate with people's boyfriends and husbands and they'll still be smiling with you oh my god uh <laughs> One of the things that these types of women do is maybe they'll try and be in your relationship, in your guy's ear or your husband's ear, bad mouthing you or making it seem like you're not doing enough, like you're not enough. Or if they can't do that, they'll make it seem like your partner is not enough for you so they can, you know, slither their way in there. Now, what's really sad about this type is that for a lot of women, a guy is only attractive when he's already with somebody else. Like babes really don't be caring. And what's more interesting is that a lot of these women will not necessarily be competing for guys that have money. Sometimes they'll just compete for guys they feel are attractive enough. It's like, can y'all at least have some standards? Like you don't have to be home wrecking somebody that can't even do anything for you in this life. Sometimes I guess whatever they feel they're gaining like sex is that good that they're ready to risk it all or debase themselves. But hey, what do I know? What's my business? But I actually do enjoy this category because witnessing the dumpster fires that happen as a result of this really extreme behavior is like watching a movie. It doesn't really get old, but it is disturbing. And I think it speaks volumes about us as women. We need to value ourselves more. There's no reason to be chasing after somebody who's already with somebody else. Now, to be fair, men pursue other women while they're in relationships. But why should we even allow ourselves to be with 
people who have the audacity to disrespect us in that way. At the end of the day, we determine how we want to be treated by anybody else. If you refuse to tolerate that kind of nonsense, you will not encounter it. And if you do encounter it, put your foot down and say that you're worth much more than that. We can do better, ladies. We can do better. But I digress. Let's move on to the next category. Next, we have another one of my favorite categories because it's the hypocrisy for me. Now, <laughs> We have the holier than thou. I'm not actually talking about people who truly fear God and don't judge people. Don't use their beliefs to make people feel like I'm talking about those people, two categories that either chastise other people for not believing the way that they do, or will be screaming Jesus, Jesus on Sunday, but on Saturday they'll be in the club making out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Probably my favorite from this category is the chastiser because I've encountered so many. And it's really fun as somebody who does not necessarily seem to know much about the Bible, which by the way, I've read like five or six times, going toe to toe with them because they'll be acting like they're so holy, so righteous, but be talking down on everyone or misquoting a very straightforward book. This is the kind of person that will always be quoting the Bible, always be criticizing other people's actions, and pretty much be making you feel like you're worthless. Meanwhile, their nasty attitude, the way that they gossip about everyone else, and the way that they feel they're better than everyone, when in actuality they harbor such bitterness, is probably going to send them to hell anyway. Now aside from the chastiser, you have the hypocrite, that person that will be again shouting Jesus, Jesus, or be quoting the Bible on social media, or be doing love, love, love. But then on Saturday, they're probably the ones turning up more than you are, drinking more than you are, going home with more guys than you ever will in your life. Which again, if that's how you want to live your life, fine. But I feel like, again, we should be living our lives with our heads held high. If you want to do something, do it with your entire chest fam. But then the hypocrite, aside from screaming Jesus, Jesus, will also be the one to backbite and cut you down and basically just ruin your life. I know enough of those types. I've seen those types in action and it's exhausting. Either serve Jesus with your whole chest or live your life with your whole chest, but don't have one foot in and one foot out. Don't be lukewarm or else he will spit you out of his mouth. Bars. Now you guys, I know I'm normally extremely mellow, but can you just tell I'm enjoying this video? I really am. And now we're on to another one of my favorite categories. At this point, all of these categories might just be my favorite. The bestie. Now the bestie is that person that loves you unconditionally that rolls with you, that rides with you, that can read your mind, that can finish your sentences, that is actually true to you and appreciates you for who you are, but at the same time is not afraid to correct you and help you to be a better version of yourself. That person genuinely loves you and cares about you and will do anything for you. So there you have it, the bestie. If you find this person, hold on very, very tightly. If you don't find this person, thank God that at least you have life. It's not easy to make friends and it's not easy to make good friends. Now, to be very frank, I feel like that type is a bit rare and we see a lot more of this other type that I'm going to get into next. And now we're on to our next type, the fake bestie. Now, lowest of low keys, I feel like all of these babes went to Covenant University. <laughs> well, I've met a few savory people from there, to be very fair. But that digression aside, I've encountered a lot of those types of women in this environment, unfortunately. The types of women that will try and get with your partner, the types of women that will tell your partners crazy things or make up lies about you outside, even though they know you very well. I can think of one person in particular who definitely had a hand to play in the demise of one of my relationships, actually the demise of two of my relationships. Now this second relationship was not necessarily that far along, but a lot of the lies that this person was perpetuating did a number and took a toll on how that particular person perceived me. Now it is what it is, I mean we move, but it's very important if you are living life and trying to have a very easy breezy experience to be very aware of the kinds of people you introduce into your circle. I made the mistake of letting this person in and I thought that okay, I've known this person for a very long time, maybe things will be fine. But they were not and I suffered a great deal as a result of my laxity. 
So the fake best deal, y'all. Be wary. They will make it seem like they love you. They will do anything for you and act the way a bestie would. But what they do behind you is what you need to be very, very, very watchful of. Next category, you have the hustler. Now, if you're a Lagos babe, chances are you're a hustler because Lagos is really fast paced and that environment kind of requires you to do what you need to do to survive. Now, a lot of people actually fit into this category, but there are people that only fit into this category. Now, the hustler is really, really good at using people. The hustler has no shame. She will use you. She will try and get connected to you. She will attach herself to you so that she can leech whatever she needs to leech from you. The hustler will drop you quicker than you can say drop as long as you've finished serving your purpose in her life. She will step on you. She will take your clients from you. She will take your friends from you. She will make new friends and drop you if she feels that you don't reflect the kind of life she wants to live. The hustler is pretty dangerous too. If you encounter this type of person, be wary because this person can drain you. This person can suck you dry. This person can take everything you hold dear to you and not even look back. This person can hate you because you're in the position that she wants to be in. And if she feels like she can usurp you, she will without a second thought. What's interesting is that I've encountered babes that are hustlers in Nigeria and Nigerian babes in America and other countries that have this same mentality. Be wary of the hustler. If you know what's good for you, run for the high hills, run for the heavens. Before this hustler steps on you, uses you, finishes you, makes you a footstool in order to get what she wants out of life. Now you all might remember this type from my other video detailing different types of guys in this environment and that's the IJGB. This is my category. Oh my god. Uh, IJGBs are foreign people. I mean you have two types really just like in the other videos. You have the, the authentic ones born and bred abroad. Real IJGBs like myself. We don't know much about the culture aside from what pop culture shows us and what our families show us in our respective countries, but we are still, you know, ethnically of Nigeria. And you have the IJGBs that went to school abroad for four years, maybe stayed there for another two working and gaining some experience and then came back to Nigeria with a totally new accent. So yeah, those are the two types of IJGBs. American IJGBs in particular tend to be very outgoing. They like to have a good time. They're usually loud, so you can tell when they're around because I mean, you're not gonna hear Nigerians that are blowing phone a being real extra with it. You're only gonna hear proper Americans being loud, laughing loud, talking loudly, just being extra. If they wanna dance, they will dance. Even if they're not necessarily privy to the culture, they will find a way to have fun. They'll go outside, they'll meet people, make friends, just be free. Now, British IJGBs are usually bad. You feel me? They're those babes that you wish you were. Their faces are always beat. Their weeds are always on point. Their accents are sexy and they know zit. There are other countries, but these are the ones I'm more familiar with. Now, for that other category of IJGBs, the faux IJGBs, yeah, they probably went to school for a little bit, got an accent, came back, and now they're trying to form most foreign but it doesn't always hit properly because at the end of the day, you can't really fake experiences you've never had. No shade, just the truth. But what I love about IJGBs is that I'm able to relate with them, obviously, as somebody who's not necessarily of this culture, but is ethnically of Nigeria. You feel me? It's just nice to be able to share experiences with people who truly understand where it is I'm coming from. Now this next category is the backstabber. Now this is a bit of a subcategory because the Festi is a backstabber, the Hustler can be a backstabber, and a few other types can also stab you in the back very, very well, especially the Shameless Homewrecker. But ultimately, a backstabber is just that, a backstabber. I mean, there are plenty of babes in this environment that maybe you're not cool with like that, you're not friends with or super close with, but you're very cool when you see each other, super cordial. But then there are types of babes who'll be making out with your boyfriend when you're not there. I mean, if your boyfriend's doing that, dump him, period. But at the same token, it's crazy what I've seen in this environment. You can smile with someone and behind you, they will absolutely destroy 
you or come for you or send people after you is crazy. The way some women choose to resort to violence in this environment is interesting. They may not get their hands dirty, but they may find someone to do their dirty work for them. Now, that's a very extreme example, and those are rather extreme cases, but it happens, and I've seen it enough. Even sisters will be fighting over men so how far people that aren't even related to you you feel me when there's this much decadence and wealth in society and there's such close proximity to it it's easy for people to move 100 percent mad as in not just single brain touch but everywhere is just touching in their brain it's kind of scary but there's a lot of desperation as well so it's something that's not necessarily uncommon Next, you have your foreign babe. These women are not necessarily Nigerian. They could be Russian, they could be German, they could be Italian, they could be American, non-Nigerian, they could be Canadian, really any other country, Lebanese especially. Now, foreign babes can be super cool, and I relate to a lot of foreign babes because obviously I'm foreign too. We can relate because we didn't grow up here, we were not born here. We've had different experiences in other environments. But at the same token, you have those foreign babes that are just not cool and be feeling like because they're not black, they're the ish, but when they come here and see all the very many beautiful Nigerian women that they have to compete with, they feel inadequate because they actually are and they're not even that popping in their countries anyway but because of some internalized racism you know they just feel extra special but um again what do i really know next you have your baby mama this is another one of my favorite categories my favorite categories are kind of problematic but let me tell you why i love this category because i discovered something recently i used to wonder why a lot of these really sexy premium nigerian babes were out here getting pregnant out of wedlock but now i get it some of them are low-key second wives to billionaires and they're collecting a lot of money on top of their baby's heads. When I'm talking a lot of money, I'm talking six figures to take care of that child because the man wants a child by them. It's just that simple. So you have those types of baby mamas, but then you have the other types of baby mamas that will maybe be baby mama of some washed up guy who doesn't have anything to offer them and the guy will try and move on but they'll be stalking the guy and stalking the new babe and really be obsessed with the guy and the new babe and they have nothing to offer they're really crazy and be doing the most but i digress back to my favorite type of baby mama the one they're collecting a lot of money on top of their baby's head to be very candid some of these girls i've known them before they were baby mamas and i know the types of people they used to mingle with. So when I was able to put two and five together based on some of my own experiences, I was like, okay, I get it now. You guys are making a lot of money. It's a very interesting society, I tell you. Low-key baby mama is a career these days. And that's cool, yo. I mean, get your bag. If you know that you're gonna be a good mother, you might as well get paid for it. Period. So live your life, boo boo. I'm not finna judge. I just find it very fascinating, truly. And last but never least, let's end on a positive note. You have your good girl. Now these are the girls that are actually truly good at heart. They love Jesus. They love their people. They're loyal to their people. They don't get into much. They probably don't drink. They probably don't smoke, but they know how to have a good time. Good girls. Some people would say I fall into that category. I don't know if I agree with that but they really have no problems. The only stressful thing about them is probably that they're not willing to be randomly dating guys. They're just doing their own thing, living their lives, trying to keep it together and get their lives together. So y'all, if you've made it this far, drop some blue emojis down below. That's literally the entire video. If I've forgotten any types, please be sure to let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Also, let me know what your favorite type was. So after commenting, don't forget to thumbs up so YouTube knows you enjoy this content. Share this video with your friends and loved ones. And again, subscribe to my channel and turn on all of your notifications so you know every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for my next video. I love you all so much and ta-ta for now.